Now, can the human personality survive death and be born again in another body? Not a prospect that all of us would relish, but surprising though it may seem, across the globe, those who believe in reincarnation probably outnumber those who don't. Reincarnation is one of the oldest beliefs, dating back to 1000 BC in India. When they're close to death, some people in Alaska believe so strongly that they even choose their next set of parents. The woman whose story we're about to tell believes reincarnation explains the dream she's had ever since she can remember. Jenny Coquel looks like any ordinary mother. Happily married with two children, she lives in the Northamptonshire town of Toaster. But Jenny has always believed that she is also the mother of another family. For as long as I can remember, I've had dreams of being Mary in Ireland and dying while the children were still young, not grown, in the 1930s. Terrible dreams of being alone in a room in pain, not at home, and knowing that there's nothing I could do to ensure the safety of the children's futures. During waking hours, I remember happier memories from the life as Mary. I remembered the children at meal times. But Jenny also sensed trouble in the family. I didn't know quite why I should feel so uneasy and so concerned what it was that I was really afraid of. Something I was shutting out. The memories were a little bit like pieces of a jigsaw. Some parts were very clear, some parts were vague, and there were so many bits that seemed to be missing, it was difficult to try to get the whole picture. As soon as she could pick up a pencil, Jenny began drawing maps of the village she saw in her mind the main roads, the station and her cottage. And when she got a school atlas, she could even locate where it was. And after several attempts, just shutting my eyes and allowing myself to be drawn to a place that might feel familiar, I found that Malahide was named just north of Dublin. For years, Jenny kept these strange visions of Ireland to herself, until at last she could hold back no longer. She had to find out if the memories meant anything. She began at her local bookshop, ordering a map of the Malahide area to confirm her childhood drawings. The maps matched. Yes. For Jenny, a first glimmer of proof. Looks the same. It does, yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. Now she needed more and tried hypnosis to plumb her deeper Relax. memories. And just drift away. Just drift off into deep, deep relaxation. One, two, it sharpened three, up a great deal of the detail. Three, there was a, one of the churches I four, saw the outside fairly clearly, five, clearly enough really to relaxed. make a little drawing afterwards of it. And standing at the end of a jetty, wrapped in a dark shawl, it was dusk. And I remembered waiting for a boat, but I had no idea who was on the boat or why I was waiting for a boat. You see where you are. But were these real memories, or just an overactive imagination? It gets difficult to believe that when you see the consistency of uh, the facts and the findings of the, the memories between one session and the next. And Jenny's been through several sessions of this at different times, uh, and each time she's been consistent in what she's been telling me. And I find that uh, evidence that I can't ignore, I can't dismiss. It's worth investigating. And there is more to this than meets the eye. It was enough for Jenny to invest in a trip to Malahide. This was the first time she'd been to Ireland, and yet she felt certain she'd been there before. I didn't need a map. I knew my way around. I tried to find 
somebody who might remember the family, who might remember the children. Back in England, Jenny received a letter from an old man in Malahide. Relating to the mother who died in the 1930s, she was Mrs. Sutton. After her death, the children were sent to orphanages. It was the breakthrough Jenny needed. She was able to get a copy of Mary Sutton's death certificate, and from an orphanage came the first names of her children. An appeal in an Irish newspaper then produced a telephone number for the oldest boy, Sonny. Hello, um, my name is Jenny Corkell. Sort of frightened and me. And I've been trying to... In one way. members of your family. Come on, said to me, wife. There's something weird here. So I don't know who this person is. How the hell did she come to know so much about the family? You said that she remembers about the jetty. Well, I explained to her that... Uh, that I used to have a little job as a caddy. And we used to row over to the island. And in the evening, we, we rowed back again. And she greet me at the top of the steps. And used to have a, she used to cuddle me. With Sonny's help, the picture was finally becoming clear. The pieces of the jigsaw were going in and making things a lot easier to understand. And most of all, he was able to explain to me what I had been afraid of. My mother was a loving person. She loved her husband and she loved her family. Can you just read it through there for me again? But my father was the opposite. My mother was only there for her convenience. He was cruel to my mother. He was cruel to his children. He'd come home from work and he'd be socially drunk then start betting around. And then many, many a time I used to get between him and my mother. But I saved my mother. Mary Sutton died at the age of 32. Her children were taken away, all except Sonny, who had to keep house for his father. It was very painful, because I've lo lost my mother, and now then I was going to lose my brothers and sisters. And when they were taken away, it was very, very horrible, very painful. I knew that I couldn't settle until the family were reunited. That part of me that was Mary needed to see the children happy. One by one, Jenny tracked down not only Sonny, but all the surviving Sutton children. And a few weeks ago, at the home of youngest sister Betty, they were reunited all together again for the first time in 61 years. Oh, Christy. It's a bit easy. It is, indeed. How are you, look? Great, and yourself? Come on. Brothers Frank and Christy. Don't cry. Phyllis and Sonny. Yeah, you, Betty. Unknown to Phyllis, she and Betty had lived within 15 minutes of each other for 40 years. And it's Phyllis who appears in the only photo of their mother, Mary. They're all about to meet the woman who believes she is Mary, back from the dead. Hi, Jenny. How are you? So, Jenny Coquel has reunited a lost family. But are they convinced she's the reincarnation of their mother? The priest only lives across from us, Father McCarthy. And I said, Father, send me three. I want a truth, though, I said. Do you believe in reincarnation? He said, that is all I can answer, Chrissy, that is. That your mother is calling from heaven. Mm. And it's coming through you. Jenny's dreams are Mummy's thoughts. Basically, my, my opinion is that Mum wanted us all together again. And Jenny was the lucky one that, that uh, she chose and put her soul into Jenny. That's the way I look at it. I don't know where the steps are there. And to complete the reunion, a homecoming. Back to the remains of the humble cottage in Malahide that the family left after the death of their beloved mother. She is back again. I, I believe that 
My mother is not passed on. She hasn't passed over, as we say. The wounds of the years of separation, the wounds of not knowing where my brothers and sisters were, those wounds, Jenny, is healed now. Because now I know where they are. I know they're alive and well. Jenny Coquel has just written a book about her experiences. Yesterday's Children, published next month, will be the latest addition to the Harry Price Library of the Unexplained. And those are our stories. I don't think you'd argue about their strangeness, but whether we believe them is for each of us to decide. Harry Price spent most of his 67 years on this earth trying to find the answers to such mysteries. But he didn't gain much public recognition, and he died in 1948, a disappointed man. If he'd lived until today, he'd have seen more and more people following in his footsteps, visiting psychics, experimenting with hypnosis, trying to communicate with the spirits, or simply just reading their horoscopes. Yet whatever we do, the truth remains as elusive and as tantalizing as ever. For now, good night.